So the next one is the virtual search host. Now be careful with this last one here because there's a specific installation path involved. So what you might want to do is when you add this particular proxies, check if the application is actually located at that particular location. So in this case, I'm going to go copy this path out and check if my ML CFG 32.cpl is located and it's actually located in this location so that's good so now I'm going to go down to the different proxies and I'm going to edit none of them need shortcuts so I don't want to create them so some other considerations you might want to do is whether to include a short an application to the command prompt Internet Explorer and one I personally like is the Internet Connections Control Panel at item. So these are not necessary for the AppV deployment kit proxies, but these can come in handy when you're troubleshooting or, for example, for defining proxy server connections in your Outlook environment. So I'm going to uh, check these as well. So let me check if Command Prompt is already in there. Internet Explorer is already in there. I'm going to name this one Internet Explorer for Microsoft Office because it's specifically set up for the Office 2010 environment. So I'm going to add an application to the command prompt as well. and to Internet Control Panel. I personally don't like applications to automatically start when Windows starts, which is why I'm going to delete Office Send a Smile from the startup location of the start menu. So we go to the next screen. Here you can launch your applications. 
for defining a feature block. Now I'm going to run, for instance, Microsoft Office Excel. You can see that Office is, uh, Excel is actually working. So I'm going to touch some of the application features to make sure that these end up in feature block one. That's pretty much it. So you can choose to launch other applications as well. I'm going to leave it with Microsoft Excel only, just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to select Next here. So once the sequence is completed, you can select Finish. And you will end up in the interface of the sequencer. So if we go back to the article, there's one registry key you have to check if it's set to merge with local, which is the HK Local Machine Software Microsoft Office 14 registry key. So you go to the virtual registry tab, and you go to HK Local Machine Software Microsoft Office 14 key. And you can check this out. And you can see that the key is actually set to merge with local, which is good. Now the second thing you might want to do here is set the local interaction allowed tag for all of the OSDs. I'm not going to do that because in the sequencer that might take up a little more, more time. Instead I'm going to use the, the OSD editor from Login Consultants and I'm going to do it after I save the project. What I am going to do is clean up the package a little bit. There's not really much to clean up but the things I like to clean up are the MSO cache file because it's pretty big and the Windows installer files. There are a lot of MSIs located underneath and I want to clear that out as well. I personally like to set the package to compress but this is not necessary and you do that in the deployment pack and select compress package. I also like to generate a Windows installer MSI package of this installation. Now this is not an MSI package in the traditional way of MSI so this is not an actual installation it's just a wrapper around the sequence making the virtual application also fit for standalone deployment. Now depending on the environment I'm going to use it then you have to set it to for instance RTSP and set a proper path. So that's pretty much everything I have to do in the sequencer. So now I can go ahead and save the package. So as you can see, the package is now saved. So the one thing that I have to do is to set the local interaction allowed and I have to set all the OSDs to the same version. So I'm going to copy this. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to close down the sequencer. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use the sequencer for this. But instead I'm going to use a tool which is created by Login Consultants, which is called the OSD Editor. And I'm just going to open up all the OSDs and edit this. So the version tag is set in the general one screen. And the local interaction allowed tag is set on the advanced tag. 
I'm going to save the OSD. And this is what I'm going to do for all the other OSD files of the Microsoft Office 2010 virtual application package. Once you've edited all the OSD files of the Microsoft Office 2010 virtual application package, you're done sequencing. This concludes my video of sequencing Microsoft Office 2010. I hope this has been informative for you. Be sure to check out my third and final video where I deploy this virtual application package of Microsoft Office 2010 to an end user workstation.